Wow, we are going to learn so many cool things on this homeschool pop video. All right, what's the first thing we should learn? How about metaphors? That's a fun word to say, isn't it? Metaphors. You're going to understand what metaphors are and how to use them. First, what is a metaphor? What is a metaphor? Well, a metaphor is a way of comparing two things. It's not the only way to compare two things, but it's a very interesting and creative way of comparing two things. You might have seen examples of metaphors in books and in poetry. And there's a really big chance that you use metaphors in your everyday speech as you're speaking to people. We just use metaphors from time to time. And Bob loves using metaphors when he speaks to me. He loves comparing things in a really creative way. Metaphors are unique because they compare things without using the words like or as. And we're going to look at some examples. At first, they're going to look a little bit weird, but then you'll get the hang of it and you'll see how fun they are to use. Here's an example. Ben was a cheetah at the race today. Ben was a cheetah at the race today. We are comparing in this sentence Ben to a cheetah because he went so fast and cheetahs are the fastest land animals in the world. So we're comparing Ben to a cheetah. It's a metaphor because we're making this comparison without using the words like or as. We mentioned earlier that metaphors can sound silly. That's because in our example, Ben is not really a cheetah, even though we said Ben was a cheetah at the race today. It's a way of comparing that makes it sound like there's no difference between them at all. Let's look at our metaphor again. Ben was a cheetah at the race today is a metaphor. It's comparing Ben to the cheetah and it's not using the words like or as. Okay, let's pretend we did use the word like or as. What if our example was Ben was like a cheetah at the race today? That makes it a different type of comparison called a simile. A simile. A simile is different than a metaphor because a simile makes a comparison using the words like or as. Remember, metaphors are comparisons that do not use like or as. Metaphors. Metaphors are comparisons that do not use like or as. Look at this example. The snow was a white blanket on the ground. The snow was a white blanket on the ground. In this metaphor, we are comparing the snow to a blanket. Notice you don't see the word like or as. This is definitely a metaphor because it's a comparison that is not using the word like or as. Let's think back to our examples. The first one, Ben, is compared to a cheetah, and he is called a cheetah. The comparison doesn't use the word like or as, so that was a metaphor. A metaphor speaking to how fast Ben was running. In our second example, the snow was compared to a blanket. The metaphor said that the snow was a blanket on the ground. That's a comparison that is not using the word like or as. This second metaphor speaks to the appearance of the snow on the ground. Metaphors. A metaphor is a comparison that does not use the words like or as. Look at this example. Learning is a piece of cake with homeschool pop. Ooh, this is a good example. Learning is a piece of cake with homeschool pop. This is a metaphor 
comparing the learning that you get with homeschool pop to cake, to a piece of cake. A piece of cake is a common metaphor speaking to how easy something is. Just like it's easy to eat a piece of cake, learning with homeschool pop in this example is easy. This is the metaphor. Learning is being compared to a piece of cake without using the words like or as. Metaphors are comparisons that do not use like or as. They're simple, they're fun, and they are a creative way of comparing two things. I am a block of ice. No, that, that's not a metaphor. I'm not comparing myself to ice. I'm frozen, okay? The <laughs> big ice cube. Mr. Whiskers was in this lab with me. Mr. Whis Mr. Whiskers, this ice is melting. It shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Where's Mr. Whiskers? Where are you? <laughs> Metaphors, a way of comparing two things without using like or as, but this is not a metaphor. I'm frozen! Hey, whoa, okay, first of all, elephants don't drive, okay? Elephants can't get a driver's license, and he's driving on the grass! He's driving on the grass! You're gonna ruin the lawn, okay? What's going on here? Alright, this is out of hand. Okay, <sighs> elephant, I don't want to tell you what you can do and what you can't do, but you can't drive, alright? Oh, my goodness, alright. Next, we are going to learn about... Homophones. Homophones are really, really weird, okay? They're very weird. Homophones are weird like a cow that works in a city. You know, that's just, that just doesn't happen. You know, I mean, it's just like, what? So many questions. Why is this cow here? Who taught this cow how to wave? Why is this cow wearing clothes? Weird. I don't know if you believe me. Really, homophones are weird. I mean, they are weird. I mean, really, really weird. Okay, I know, I'm repeating myself. You need to understand, these are really weird words, and we're gonna show you why. You see, homophones are words that sound the same, but have different meanings and spelling. Another way of saying that is, homophones are words that sound the same, but look different, and don't mean the same thing. They're kind of tricky, weird words that they sound the same, but they look different, and they don't mean the same thing. Okay, I think you're ready. It's time to meet the homophones. We want to give you some examples of these words that sound the same, but they look different, and they don't mean the same thing. Homophones. Same sound, different spelling and meaning. Like, nose, and nose. They sound the same, don't they? The exact same. They're homophones because they've got very different meanings, don't they? The first nose is a part of your body. The second nose is when you have knowledge about something, something in your mind. He knows what homophones are. They have the same sound, but different spelling and different meaning. It's tricky, isn't it? It's a little weird. Homophones. Homophones. Same sound, different spelling and meaning, like eight and eight. They sound the exact same, don't they? But one is a number, right? This first eight is a number. The second eight has to do with eating. The baby ate the watermelon. Eight and eight are homophones. Homophones. Same sound, different spelling and meaning, like hey and hey they sound the exact same but they're homophones aren't they because the first hey means hello and it's spelled differently hello hey it's an informal way of saying hello just like this friendly little bird is doing right now hey the second hey is food for horses they sound the same but they have different spelling and different meaning hey and hey are homophones we want to make sure you really understand this homophones are words that sound the same but have different meanings and spelling like by 
and by. This first by means near or close to. The photographer that took this picture was by the grasshopper. This second by means to purchase. You do this at stores, don't you? This person is buying an apple. Buy and buy. They're homophones. Here is our final example of homophones. Flu and flu. This first flu isn't very fun at all. It's a type of sickness. The second flu is a lot more fun. This is a seagull that is flying. The seagull flew over the ocean. Flew and flew. They sound the exact same, but they are very different words, aren't they? They are homophones. Now this is something crazy. Did you know there are over 7,000 homophones in the English language? Over 7,000, and that's why we can't talk about all of them here. There are homophones that you probably know that we didn't have time to cover today, but there are over 7,000 of them in the English language. Hey, can you think of any other homophones? Maybe after you watch this video, try to come up with a list of homophones that you might know that we didn't cover in this video. They're a lot of fun. Oh, oh this is such a heavy cart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, it's hard work. You know, a lot of times learning can be hard work, too. But we hope that these videos are really helpful and make learning fun so that learning isn't hard like pushing this cart. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, what's the next thing we should learn about? Let's learn about... Prepositions. Yeah, wow, what a cool sounding word. What are prepositions? You're about to find out and then you'll just be able to say prepositions and you'll know exactly what you're talking about. It's going to be cool. First, we want to show you this. Okay, and you might be saying, why are you showing us a bridge? Oh, there's a good reason for that. It's a very good reason for that. We're going to just keep that a secret for now. But for now, just look at this picture of a bridge. Bridges are so cool, aren't they? They're so cool. They're structures that connect two sides of things, don't they? And you can see the storm clouds are coming. It's probably going to start raining. You know, the photographer probably was running for cover. You know, but this is a nice picture of a bridge. Here's another picture of a bridge. Do you know the name of this bridge? Pretty famous, pretty famous bridge. Okay. Yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, the Golden Gate Bridge. If you didn't know that, you need to check out our video on the Golden Gate Bridge. Some fascinating facts there. You're going to love it. You're going to love sharing those with your friends and your family, and everyone's going to be like, what? Let's look at the Golden Gate Bridge again. It's an amazing bridge, and a bridge connects two sides. A bridge. You might be wondering, what does this have to do with prepositions? I thought we are talking about prepositions, not bridges. What is going on here? Well, <laughs> that is what a preposition is. Okay? A bridge. A preposition is a bridge. Okay? In the world of words and grammar, it's not really a bridge. You can't drive a car on a preposition. Okay? That would be a little bit difficult. <laughs> And you wouldn't be able to do it. But a preposition works just like a bridge in the world of words. A preposition is a bridge that comes before a noun or pronoun and connects it to the rest of the sentence. And this is how it works. For example, let's say we've got a noun at the end here, and then we've got the rest of the sentence. Now, we've got a problem. There's a big gap. Something's got to go in between. Now, let's say the part with the noun is my backpack, and the rest of the sentence is, I put my book. I put my book, my backpack. <laughs> There's a cap. I mean, it's a lonely backpack. We need a connecting word. We need a bridge. 
So we put in a preposition. Yeah, a preposition, a bridge word, a connecting word that will connect the noun at the end to the rest of the sentence. So we're going to use the preposition in. So it would read like this. I put my book in my backpack. Now the noun backpack is connected to the rest of the sentence. Yay! <laughs> Yay, bridge! Yay, prepositions! Let's look at this example. Charles loves to rest the floor. Uh-oh, there's a gap. <laughs> We're gonna need a bridge. We're gonna need a preposition to connect floor to the rest of the sentence, aren't we? Let's try the preposition on. Charles loves to rest on the floor. Oh, it's perfect! On is connecting floor to the rest of the sentence. Charles loves to rest on the floor. Wow, that's perfect! That's perfect! I love prepositions. Prepositions can talk about place, time, or movement. Here's some examples of prepositions that talk about place. On, over, at, in, around, under, below, above, behind. These are all prepositions that talk about place or placement. Isn't that interesting? Let's look at this example. Beth enjoys skating the lake. Uh-oh, there's a gap. We need a preposition. We're going to need a preposition that talks about place. Let's try around. Beth enjoys skating around the lake. Oh, that's the perfect preposition for that. It connects lake to the rest of the sentence. Beth enjoys skating around the lake. Prepositions. <laughs> we said this already. It's, they're pretty cool. They're pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty amazing. All right. You got to connect. We need the connecting words. We need the bridges. We need prepositions. Now, prepositions can talk about time as well. Look at these prepositions. Before, during, after. These are prepositions. These are bridge words, connecting words. They're prepositions that talk about time. Look at this example. It snowed four inches the day. Oh, we're definitely going to need a preposition there, aren't we? Oh my goodness. What's a preposition we could use for this sentence? Let's try the preposition during. During. So our sentence would read, it snowed four inches during the day. Wow, that's perfect. That's the perfect bridge word, the perfect connecting word, the perfect preposition. Now, prepositions can also express movement. Whoa. Like these prepositions, through, towards, to, into, across, along. These are prepositions, bridge words, connecting words that express movement. Let's try this one. We were glad we went the game. Uh-oh, we're definitely going to need a preposition. We have to connect game to the rest of the sentence. Let's try to. We were glad we went to the game. To is one of the prepositions that express movement. We were glad we went to the game. And now the word game is connected to the rest of the sentence. Prepositions can also just seem random. Like about, of, and from. You could just memorize these words as prepositions because they do kind of seem random. About, of, and from are all prepositions too. Here's our next sentence. We enjoy taking care the birds. Uh-oh, there's a gap. We're going to need to fill that with a bridge word, a preposition, aren't we? What is a preposition that you think would go well there? Which one do you think fits in that like a puzzle? 
We enjoy taking care the birds. Yeah, of, of. We enjoy taking care of the birds. Of is a preposition. It's a bridge word connecting birds with the rest of the sentence. Now here's something that can be tricky. Prepositions can also appear at the beginning of a sentence. The preposition still has a noun coming after it, and then there's the rest of the sentence. But the preposition is still connecting the noun to the rest of the sentence. Let's show you with an example. All right, here we go. After dinner, ooh, after is the preposition. After dinner, I enjoy reading a book. Wow. Now notice it's still a bridge word and it's still connecting dinner, that's the noun, to the rest of the sentence even though it appears at the beginning. It's still a bridge word, still a connecting word. So if you see a preposition at the beginning of a sentence, don't freak out, it's okay. Sometimes they go there. Prepositions are connecting words. And wow, just like bridges, they're a great time, they're awesome, and they just, they're just cool. They're just cool. Who else is a fan of prepositions? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. No one? Uh, you like prepositions now, right? You love them, right? You love prepositions. They're connecting words. They're bridge words. Wow, Mommy, you're doing such a great job in your race. I had no idea you were an athlete, okay? I mean, with all that cloth wrapped around, you're doing great. You're doing a great job, just like these kids are doing a great job learning. In fact, how about this? The next thing we're going to learn about is action verbs, which sounds exciting because it is exciting. Well, first things first. What is an action verb? Huh. What is an action verb? The truth is, in order to understand what an action verb is, you have to understand what a noun is. Remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. A person, like a teacher, a place, like a gas station, or a thing, like an alarm clock. If it's a person, place, or thing, it's a noun. Okay, so what is an action verb? Well, action verbs are words that tell you what nouns do. Oh, it's so cool. We'll say it again. Action verbs are words that tell you what nouns do. And we'll give you some examples. All right, now we're going to look at some action verbs for the nouns we just saw. Remember, action words are words that tell you what nouns do. So our first one, what do teachers do? What does this teacher do? Yeah, he teaches. Teaches is a good action verb. It's what this noun does, what this teacher does. What else does this teacher do? This teacher helps. Yeah. All right, on to the gas station. What does a gas station do? Well, a gas station sells, doesn't it? It sells gasoline and other things. What else does a gas station do? What's another action verb for a gas station? Well, a gas station fuels. The gas station fuels your car. Fuels is an action verb. Great, let's try the alarm clock. What does an alarm clock do? What are some action verbs that describe what an alarm clock does? Well, an alarm clock ticks, doesn't it? Tick, 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 tick. That's one action verb for an alarm clock. Another action verb, let me give you a hint. This is what an alarm clock does when you need to wake up. What does an alarm clock do when you need to wake up? It rings, yeah. An action verb is rings. Action verbs describe what nouns do. A teacher teaches and helps. A gas station sells and fuels. And an alarm clock ticks and rings. 
Huh, let's think of some more real-life examples of action verbs. Awesome, here's a picture of a rat. Pretty cute for a rat. Most people think mice are cute. Mice are cute too. Rats can be cute, just so you understand. Now, what does this rat do in the picture? What is the action verb? What does this rat do? Yeah, this rat eats. Great job, eats is the action verb. It's describing what this noun does. What does this rat do? This rat eats. Eats is the action verb. Let's look at this picture. What does this dog do in the picture? What does this dog do? What's the action verb? Yeah, this dog runs. The action verb for this picture is runs. This dog runs. Cool, let's look at this one. What does this lady do in the picture? What does this lady do? What is the action verb? Uh-huh, this lady reads. Reads is the action verb. Good job. Wow, look at this. What does this man do in the picture? What's the action verb? What does this man do? Aha, yeah. This man swims. Swims is the action verb. Awesome. Action verbs are words that tell us what nouns do. All right, you're ready. You're ready. You might not feel like it. You're ready. You know this action verb stuff. You're doing a great job. Let's play the action verb game. Yes. Woo. Okay, so here's how we play the action verb game. We're going to show you a sentence and you tell us which word you think is the action verb. Let's get started. Okay, here's our first one. The little girl sang. The little girl sang. Which word is the action verb? Yeah, sang. Sang is the action verb because it tells us what the noun does. Good job. Let's try this one. He speaks to his mother. He speaks to his mother. Which were is the action verb? Aha! Speaks. Speaks is the action verb. It's the word that tells us what the noun does. The noun, he, speaks. Speaks is the action verb. Good job. Okay, let's look at this one now. They grow flowers. They grow flowers. Which word is the action verb? You've got the hang of this. Awesome! Grow. Grow is the action verb. It's the word that tells us what the noun does. Good job! Okay, the last one. The kids watch homeschool pop. <laughs> Uh, this is a cool one. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the kids watch homeschool pop. Which word is the action verb? Yeah, watch is the action verb. <laughs> to new adventures, we fly. Fly is an action verb. It's what I do. We are so happy to have you with us. I mean, you are so awesome. You really are. Oh, you like my poster? <laughs> Mr. Whiskers poster, you know? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool, you know? <laughs> it's a pretty cool poster. Pretty cool cat, too. I wonder what he would like to learn about next. If he would learn from one of our videos, what would he like to learn next? Hmm. How about... Uh, hmm. Let's learn about...
Similes. Similes are a lot of fun to use. In fact, you probably already use similes, maybe even without realizing it. You might be wondering, what are similes? How could I have used them if I don't even know what they are? Similes are actually a way of comparing two things. We compare things all of the time. Look at this comparison. The baby sleeps like a koala. In this sentence, we are comparing the baby to a koala. What's the comparison? That the baby sleeps like a koala. This is a comparison. Look at this comparison. His sister is as gentle as a lamb. His sister is as gentle as a lamb. The comparison is between his sister and the lamb. And the gentleness is what makes them similar. His sister is as gentle as a lamb. That's a comparison. Let's look at both of our comparisons again. The baby sleeps like a koala, and his sister is as gentle as a lamb. You want to know something interesting about these comparisons? These comparisons are similes. That's right. Both of these sentences are similes. You see, similes are comparisons that use the words like or as. If there's a comparison that uses the words like or as, then you know that that comparison is a simile. Look at this sentence. Learning is as easy as pie. Wow, learning is being compared to having pie. Easy as pie is a very common simile that means easy. Just like it's easy to eat pie, in this sentence, learning is as easy as pie. It's easy to learn. Learning is as easy as pie. This is a simile because it is a comparison using the word as. Remember, similes are comparisons that use the words like or as. Similes are a way of comparing things using the words like or as. Look at this simile. The strawberries are red like roses. The strawberries are red like roses. We know that this is a simile because it is a comparison. And notice the word like. The word like means, if it's a comparison, that it is a simile. The strawberries are being compared to the roses. And what do the strawberries have in common with the roses? Yeah, they're both red. The strawberries are red like the roses. This is a simile. Similes are easy to spot. A simile is a comparison and you're looking for one of two words. You're hunting for the word like or as. If the comparison uses either of these words, you know it's a simile. And what's cool is, now you can use the word like or the word as in your comparisons to make your very own similes. Isn't that awesome? Wow, he is as happy as a clam that he knows what similes are now. Get it? That's a simile because it uses the word as. You know, a comparison that uses the word like or as is a simile. He's as happy as a clam. He's as happy as a homeschool pop viewer, right? You know? He's as happy as Mr. Whiskers, you know? Oh, wow, look, it's the homophone cow. Homophone cow. Ho homophone cow? He you're just walking, you're just, just going to ignore me? I, I see how it is. Okay, so you're upset that we haven't included you in other videos. What do you call this? You know, you're in a compilation video. That's cool, too. All right, I, I need to talk to the homophone cow. Uh, but in the meantime, let's learn about sentence fragments. Ah, the beach is so wonderful, isn't it? Don't you just love the beach? I'm standing here with my shopping cart, and there's one word that comes to mind. When I'm standing here looking at the sun setting, this is complete. 
What else could you want? You're standing on a beach. Don't make fun of the shopping cart. <laughs> you know, I might find something at the beach, okay? You don't bring a shopping cart to the beach. That's weird, okay? I've got a shopping cart. I feel complete. This is complete to me. This makes me feel happy. You know, sentences can be like that too. You see, sentences like to be complete. They love to be complete. A sentence always has a subject and a verb. A sentence wants to be complete because without a subject and a verb, it's not a sentence anymore. In fact, it's something else. It's a sentence fragment. But let me not get too far ahead of myself. Always remember, a sentence has to have a subject and a verb. Kind of like every cool birthday party has to have a baby and Chomsky. I mean, <laughs> I mean the baby, maybe. Chomsky, I haven't forgotten about the hat. I haven't forgotten about the hat, yeah. So, <laughs> you can come to my party, but it's still, it's still raw. It still, still hurts. Still hurts. All right, let's get back again. So a sentence always has a subject and a verb. That means a sentence is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. It needs to have both, otherwise it's not a sentence. A sentence is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. Like this, the dog plays catch. Does it have a subject and a verb? Yeah, the subject is the word dog. And the verb is which word? Which word is the verb? Yeah, plays. This is a sentence. It has a subject and a verb, which means it's expressing a complete thought. This is complete. There's a subject, there's a verb, we know what's going on, and there's no way this dog is catching this ball. Or maybe this dog will catch the ball. Who knows? Let us know in the comments which one you think will happen. You think he's going to catch it? Or do you think it's going to fall to the ground? Who knows? But this is a sentence. This is complete. It has a subject and a verb. It's a sentence. Or look at this one. The pig swims with a friend. The pig swims with a friend. Is there a subject and is there a verb as well? Well, yeah. The subject is pig. The pig. But is there a verb? Which word is the verb? Yeah. Swims. So this has a subject and a verb. This is a sentence. I mean, it's got a subject, and it's got a verb, and it's expressing a complete thought. It's not missing anything. It's complete. It's got the subject. It's got the verb. It is a sentence. So, what happens if a group of words is missing a subject or a verb? Well, then it's kind of like me on the beach without my shopping cart, you know? It's, it's missing something. A sentence fragment is a group of words that is missing a subject or a verb. That's what it's called, is a sentence fragment, when it's missing something. When it's just part of a sentence, it's missing something. It's not a complete sentence, it's a sentence fragment. Kind of like being on the beach without my cart. <laughs> a sentence fragment is incomplete, it's missing something. We're going to show you some sentence fragments so you can see that they're incomplete. They're missing something. They're missing either a subject or a verb. All right. I'm ready to look at them. Sentence fragments are groups of words that are missing something. Like this. The book under the table. What? The book under the table? Where's the verb? There's no verb. It has a subject, the book, but there's no verb. It doesn't tell us what's going on with the book. What about the book under the table? There's so many unanswered questions. This is not a complete thought. The book under the table is a sentence fragment. Or how about this one? Ran to school. Ran to school? 
It doesn't have a subject. Who ran to school? We have so many questions about this. This is not a complete thought. It doesn't tell us who it's talking about. Every sentence has to have a subject and a verb. This has the verb ran, but it doesn't have a subject. Ran to school is not a complete sentence. It's a sentence fragment. Look at this one. The old car on the road. Wait a second. This doesn't have a verb. The old car on the road, it's missing something, isn't it? It's a sentence fragment. It's not telling us what the old car on the road is doing. It's just saying the old car on the road. Well, what about it? What about it? What is the old car on the road doing? This is a sentence fragment. It's a group of words that's missing something. And our final sentence fragment is... Mr. Whiskers on Thursday. Wait a second. What? Mr. Whiskers, what did you do on Thursday? It's a sentence fragment. I don't know. I don't. What did you do? Mr. Whiskers, you don't speak English, do you? I have no idea what you did on Thursday. I hate sentence fragments because they don't give you all the information. There's no verb. I don't know what Mr. Whiskers did on Thursday. That's not a complete sentence. you got to have a subject and a verb. Mr. Whiskers, please. I hope you're safe. You know, I, I go to the beach with my shopping cart on Thursdays and everything. To review, a sentence fragment is a group of words that is missing a subject or a verb. Now, a sentence always has a subject and a verb. A sentence fragment, though, is missing either a subject or a verb. A sentence fragment is missing something. Wow, we are super proud of you! Now you know what a sentence fragment is. You know that a sentence fragment is a group of words that is missing a subject or a verb. And you know that a sentence has both a subject and a verb. A sentence shares a complete thought, but a sentence fragment is missing something. Pretty cool, huh? So the next time somebody says something to you that isn't a complete thought, you could say, hey, that was a sentence fragment because uh, that was missing something. Wow, you completed the video. That is so impressive. Well, you might notice there's a circle right here on this video page that you can click to subscribe to our channel, or you can click this rectangle to go to another one of our videos. But keep learning. Learning is so cool.